Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You, you better not do that too much. I feel a lot of nostalgia coming on and all of a sudden I can start telling a lot of new Knut Rockney jokes. But, uh, but it's a pleasure for me to welcome you to Washington, and I hope your stay will be as pleasant as mine was with you last August in Connecticut. The, uh, uh, I'm well aware of your great work in charitable, fraternal, and patriotic projects, and of course I appreciate your effective support in regard to tuition tax credits. Uh, in the, uh, we're still going to fight that battle, and I still think that it is... Uh, I know that some well-meaning people and groups and organizations somehow feel that it would be an intrusion on the financing of public education, and I still say we've got to show them if they really want to see an intrusion on the financing of public education, let all these other schools close, dumping their students on the public system, and... <laughs> but we're gonna... Who was it that said we'll fight it out in this line if it takes all summer? <laughs> uh, but um, I'd like also to just... I know I only have a few minutes here, but I'd like to uh, touch upon another issue that I know is foremost in your hearts and right now is currently on your minds in view of recent activities, and that is right to life. I'm sure you share my disappointment over the Supreme Court's decision this week that struck down several state restrictions on the way abortions are performed. One that struck me is that was so revealing as to not really seeing this issue as it is, was to strike down an issue that said that girls under 15 years must get their parents' permission, and they said that that was illegal and that they shouldn't be required to do that. Recently, when we had our so-called squeal rule in the public prints, which, as you know, was requiring underage children who go to uh, various centers, some of them with public funding, and uh, to require that they, that the parents be notified that they are coming there with uh, seeking contraceptive materials and devices. And they said that we were interfering with the privacy of the young people by insisting that their parents be notified? When are we going to realize that the great problem in this country with regard to the family as an institution, that a lot of that problem has to do with government sticking its nose into the family relationship, and government was never intended to be mama and papa, and it had better get out of that business. And I'm far from losing hope that the sanctity of human life is an issue that won't go away. And this decision merely highlights the need for Congress to make its voice heard against abortion on demand, whether by statute or by constitutional amendment. As a matter of fact, don't get shocked when I say this, I have had a feeling for a long time that the Constitution is already very plain on this issue. So what we need is some interpretive legislation because the Constitution makes it very plain that everyone is entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And let them prove to us that the unborn child is not a human life.
matter of fact, they, they lost their case on that a little bit in the decision that we're complaining about. When one of the laws that they struck down was one that would require a second doctor to be on hand in case during the abortion, the process didn't take away the life of the unborn and that it would then be alive and another doctor there to keep it alive. Well, if that isn't an admission that it is alive before they do what they do, I've never heard one. So I think for whatever good it is in this fight, why don't we simply strike out and say until you can prove it isn't alive, we have to morally consider it is. Mm. And we should all take heart at the ex excellent legal opinion of Justice O'Connor dissenting from the others in this opinion. I got a little vindication there. <laughs> she and Justices Rehnquist and White. I couldn't help but notice, though, that all but one of the justices in the majority are considerably older than I am. Now, some people don't think that's possible. <laughs> and it's hard to avoid the conclusion that whoever is president for the next half dozen years could have quite an effect on our law with respect to abortion for a long time to come. <laughs> well, again, I'm not going to interrupt your meeting any longer than this, and they've told me that I've got business back on the other side of the street, so I'll get over there, but it is a wonderful pleasure to have these few minutes to spend with you, to recall pleasant memories, and God bless you all for what you're doing. Thank you. Mr. President, the, I speak today for the leadership of the Knights of Columbus throughout all of North and Central America and the Philippines and the Caribbean. And I can assure you that we appreciate so much your constant uh, battle to uh, bring God back into the schools, to preserve life, and particularly to make family the soul of this nation. We want to thank you and we want to assure you that we support you in every one of these endeavors. And we also wish to thank your staff for being so courteous to us on so many occasions, inspiring us and leading us on. Thank you very much. Thank you.